end of the day, I do think that you can read all the manuals you want. You can read all the manuals you want. You can read manuals all you want, that's it. You can read manuals all you want. How to make progressive house sounds and working with arpeggios. That's today's video. Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up, I'm Analog Kitchen, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe. You'll be notified whenever I upload a new video, but that's when you click that bell icon as well. You will be kept in the loop. You won't miss out on anything. I will say welcome to Vetter. That's Joost Vetter. I have to say welcome to Andy. <coughs> <coughs> What the hell? <coughs> I'm dying here. <coughs> Johnny Rivera, Andy Collier, and Joost Vetter, welcome to my Patreon page, which you can find on patreon.com slash Kitchen. And when you support me on Patreon, you're basically supporting me in uh, making better content for you, um, developing a mixer. I do think that for live musicians, there's much to gain. So I'm actually working on that. Early days though. <laughs> How to make progressive house sounds because progressive house is one of the coolest sounds to make. Okay, you might know it as melodic techno. I call it progressive house because it was called progressive house forever. And I do understand that. So when the Swedish house mafia and all them cats started to make a uh, house music that all of a sudden was deemed progressive. So the progressive cats in uh, Berlin went like, no. <laughs> Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You didn't say the magic word. Uh -uh. Now, techno to me, you know, when I think about techno, I'm thinking about like Green Velvet, you know, uh, thinking about Dave Clark, Dave Angel, I'm talking about Adam Bayer, Carl Cox, <laughs> obviously. So there's a lot of people that are making techno. When it comes to progressive house, though, you have to talk about different people. England, you'll talk about Sasha Dickweed. Germany, Timo Mas. Argentina. Much, much, much later. Argentina. Hernan Cataño. How cool name is that? Holland. Sander Kleinenberg. Lucien Ford. Remember him? Heard that guy uh, cut off his hair. Now, when to make progressive house, there's a few things that come into play. When you make house music, it's different. When you make techno, it's different. And when you make that bouncy house that everybody seems to like now, the tech house stuff, it's different when it comes to progressive house. Why does it appeal to a wide array of people? It does because it's more musical. So classically trained musicians or people that actually have some sort of a music education, they love the fact that you can actually get through these chord passages and go in a certain direction when it comes to composing music. So instead of just producing, you're actually composing music, which is cool. And me, having an orchestra education, played uh, a lot of instruments, I love the fact that I'm not limited by, hey, there's a bass drum, there's a hat, and everything needs to fit in between. I can just go wherever within my creative realm, so to speak, and I really love that. Um, one strong ingredient, though, You thought the video froze, didn't you? <laughs> I don't want to go in all musical, music school-like, because um, I do think you can find a lot of that stuff online already, but you know about my channel if you follow it. It's, um, for me, it's it's more of how you, how you uh, apply certain things and what the mindset is be behind using something. Now, the arpeggios, um, they come in all sizes and shapes. Obviously, you can uh, go all polymetric on it, why you use five notes or three notes and then they'll just repeat. You can go all um, uh, Stranger Things, which is something like. That's a mini log XD, by the way. I'm not showing it to you because I already just unboxed it and I'm really gonna find out what it does before I'm going to unleash it on you. Well, I might. Now, I'm not gonna go overboard. I'm just gonna basically show you on how I make a progressive house track, what you need, how you can utilize and work it. So, let's head over to the last set and let's do it. No, we, 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 we don't go there. Just, just stop. All right, let's go there and let's uh, make it work. All right. Plum, 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 plum. Stop it. All right, guys. Right, in the live set, we are here with the 
Dave Smith Tetra, the Model D and the Mini Tower, and they're all wired up through the Octatrack. So the four inputs of those three synthesizers, one stereo and the other one mono, go into four inputs on the uh, on the Octatrack. The Octatrack then sums it and it comes out of the output, which goes into the L12 Live Track mixer that I've got here, which I don't usually bring because everything is set up in a way that I can just connect it to a Zone 96 or a 92 mixer. Then the Octatrack and the Akai are joined at the hip, so the Akai being the um, boss of the operation here, basically sends out a program change uh, command to the Octatrack as well. So if I switch keys or I switch patterns or sequences, as they are called in the Akai MPC Live, it basically means that the Octatrack switches in time. Very handy because um, if you follow the channel, you heard me talk about it already. If you're new here, welcome. Um, a thing that sometimes happens if you've got different sequences is that this one will send program change over here. This one will have to think on four bars before it actually switches to the program change. This one is already playing it for four bars, which is no problem if you stay in the same key. If you're going to different keys, then obviously that is a problem. So there is a neat trick that you have to do with the Octatrack in order for it to switch instantly to the next pattern. So basically pattern A1 here is pattern A1 over here and so forth and so forth. So I can do my tracks in different segments and have the Octatrack follow along. So where I can use as many sequences if I would want on the Akai MPC Live, which is a school, I have limited myself to eight different sequences building up from the first one being the emptiest one and the last one being the transition pattern. So it goes from pad one to eight, that's one song, pad nine to 16, that's another song. So out of those um, uh, banks that I have in here, I've got 16 tracks that I can actually do. Yeah, one, two, three, four, and the banks go from A all the way to age. Okay, the TBO3 is here. Um, the Micro Monster is hidden away underneath the Mi Log. The Mi Log is a very new addition, uh, addition to this thing, so I'm not by any means a specialist on mastering this thing, basically. So, but I know a little bit on how I can work it, so we're gonna see if we can get some arpeggios going on that thing today. Now, when it comes to progressive house music, or melodic techno, well, however you want to call it, it is mandatory to understand what sounds work and why they do work. Uh, another thing is it's a more condensed form of dance music, so you'll find that if you are going to utilize your sounds uh, to work properly, you don't want to stack them on top of each other. A lot of people are layering kicks, layering sounds and blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I'll just get headaches because um, if you can do a certain thing with one sound, I would suggest to always go do that. Uh, I would not necessarily layer stuff up unless it's actually helping something. So, of course, when you work with a Model D, then you are layering different oscillators, but <laughs> that in itself is also a process that takes a little bit of time to get used to. Now, what I'm going to do is going to start fairly simple. I've got the launch control that I didn't touch up on here which is mapped out to the drums on the Akai MPC Live because I don't want to be menu diving. What I do want, if I'm only using one sequence instead of the eight that I usually use for a track, what if I only got one? Sometimes you got a transition sequence and you do something live over it. It's really cool, then it's not handy if all the drums are constantly playing. So you want, you want to be able to um, manipulate your drums on the fly. So that's why I've got the Novation Launch Control mapped out to the Akai MPC Live. Now, um, the pattern that's playing is this. Ooh, nice. A very simple progressive house groove, yeah? So, so this is the mini term. Now I'm going to start immediately by um, giving you a listening example because actually I've got this diode clipper cable which Kink made for me. Um, and it basically is a is is 
based around the way guitar pedals or distortions work. So the more you drive the signal through the cable, the more the cable is going to introduce uh, transients, overtones, and if I really crank it, it's obviously going to sound as crusty as hell, but that's not what I'm looking for. But the mini tire being a Moog, it's got a lot of transients. So can you imagine if you stick a sound that is thick by itself already, if you stick it through the cable? So listen. This is just the volume. It almost sounds like a filter. Do you hear what's happening? If not, rewind it back and play it again until you hear it. You can hear that, that, that the sound is introducing um, yeah, overtones. So that means that I've got two weapons that I can use now on this sound because I don't really use any equalizing on any of the sounds that you are listening, listening to. So you like to use a saturation as a means of getting the sounds to gel together, which is very important in choosing the equipment as well, because they all have got their fingerprint, they all got a specific sound, so it takes a while to figure out what works. I can tell you, this is working because I've measured literally everything to go together. Uh, but that's a different topic for a different time. So, listening to the sound, you can hear it starts to introduce a little bit, and that's not even touching the filter. So I'm now on the one mini tower where the cutoff frequency filter, the knob is red, because me with my thick fingers broke the knob. Um, I broke the knob a, a few times, so um, I changed it with this. So it's round, if the sound is round. Let's put some envelope on it, a little bit of release. So you can hear it better. Wow, wow, wow. How nice is that? I guess it's some sort of like a compressed sort of like sound on it. So I like it. Because this with the kick in itself does a lot. Now I suggest that you listen to this stuff on a on a on a decent headphone or on a decent sound system. Because this in a club is, is rocking, this works. Okay, now going back to um, the topic of the day, creating progressive house sounds, that's one thing that I do use, yeah? Now, I've got my kick. There's a clap that's constantly playing that's not mapped out to the Novation launch control. Call me superstitious. I just need something to always play so that I know where I am in the groove or you can follow along or if something breaks down then at least something groovy is playing you know i do think it's very important when you're making dance music that something needs to keep playing so then i know for a fact that if everything is either up or down on the launch control and still something's playing i know okay that thing's not broken it's just it's just a little trick anyway um kick and the rest of the drums yeah now what else have we got this let's let's shorten the release a little bit and if you wonder how long certain notes need to be try and just like cut them off before the next kick drum is starting this is a little bit too long which makes the track a little bit too lazy so if you want to add stuff uh, try and keep it in a set bracket so before the next kick is, is starting Bop. There needs to be stopping right there. You hear it? Bam. 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 So that's my go to length for now. Um, there's more things playing, but for now, I think now this is already going. That's a bit of ear candy I would like to address as well. There's this, this spaced out kind of um, stranger thing sort of sound that's here. Now the reason that I stuck it there is because, turning it off, the mini tower, listen, listen to it. That's just there to give you a sense of there's more coming, there's more to this track than just drums, because this 
if you would go doorless, the first thing you encounter is, okay, I got my drum computer. Okay, now I've got my synthesizer, you know? It's not so much the, the, the approach of the Ableton Brigade, you know what I mean? So you need to figure out certain elements that would make your sound gel together with the, um, uh, the, the, the regular kind of producer DJs out there that are playing also. Because if somebody brings his door to the stage, obviously, that's a, a completely different sound. So in order for you to sound not like them, but to not stand out too much and have that sound also appeal to a wide area of people, is actually just drawing people in because you are analog, you're going to be louder, your sound's going to be more advanced. So that's a bit of, um, yeah, an advantage that you can utilize to help yourself. Now that's why I got that thing here. Boom, it's only playing once, but going back to my, to my bass drum, bass line, boom. Okay, next thing I would like to introduce is the TB-03. Instantly I hear that I need to back off a little bit on the volume on the Minitor because these two things need to um, play together. Mind you, the Air Candy has got the same frequencies as those two things, which means it's hinting that those things are drums, right? That they are playing like a percussive element rather than a musical element. And the dance between, is it a musical element? Is it a rhythmical element? That's actually where a lot of gain is as well in terms of making your track work and stand out. Now, that's exactly why I shortened the note to not overlap that next bass drum because if I'm going to lengthen the note on the, on the move, instantly, this is now going to take the lead. And because you can hear this one, you can also hear all the other notes. And that means that your cohesion falls apart. Not good. See? Now, everything works together. Like cogs and a wheel. Is that how you say it? Well, you know what I mean. Okay, next up, I think it might be time to introduce an arpeggio. to work if you don't turn this on. All right, there we go. Three, four. I need the pitches first. That's better. That's ARP on there, so let's do that. You hear that note? Off. I don't like it. So, let's go do that again. Let's first see what we're going to do. Now I've played this arpeggio in a certain way because I need suspense to enter my track. Because if it's off, everything is, uh, is in this known. So there's no melody there yet. The melody will come from the Model D as soon as I enter it. But the arpeggio now is a very um, important ingredient because it will give you the sense of, hey, there's melody coming into my track but not so much as it's taking you away because we're not trying to just like be back here, you know what I mean? It doesn't need to be put on the wall of the museum. In the end of the day, it's about people on the dance floor dancing, but you need a little bit of that melody. For 
forget my singing, but you understand where the notes are playing are going. Okay, and then I will contradict that chord with what the model B is going to be playing. Let's turn it on. I'll filter it down because I know the model D is very thick and very deep. Now what I've done with the Model D as well is the three oscillators are all different in terms of where their um, waveforms are. I've got like a square wave on the first one which is on 32 in height. It goes up from 32, 16, 8, 4 and 2 in terms of high and then there's a low um, as well. So that's the first oscillator and maybe um, I can turn stuff off so you can follow along with what's happening. You go, you stop as well. Okay, that's the model B, yeah? Let's turn all the drums down. Besides that one clap, I told you. Okay, now... And there's a trick as well. If I need more percussive, uh, percussion... It's actually not a long note that's playing. It's just a short 16th. But um, I'll open, I'm opening up the decay. Okay, sound design wise, yeah? This is the bottom one, the nice round square wave, yeah? Then the second oscillator, obviously, is on eight. This is a ramp up, sawtooth ramp up, or triangle wave, I should say. Just don't lie. Okay, but that, that's an octave on top of it, yeah? So the both of them play this. See, this is nice and round, but I'm afraid that if I'm going to enter more sounds in, you will not hear it that distinctly. So what I'm doing is adding this middle oscillator, oscillator 2, and it's just complementing the sound. Mind you, the first oscillator is on 8, when you look at volume going from 0 to 10. And then the second one, which is higher, uh, but I do put that one on 10, and then there's another oscillator, that's the third one. That's also on a square wave, but then also a little bit higher, that's on 16. So, those are the same. So that's an octave there. And then that's the middle one, which just adds a bit of grit, a bit of craziness in there. Now, because they are all differently spaced out, when I'm going to use my color frequency, it means that wherever I am on the dial, the resonance will eat at the sound. And that is cool because I have placed all these different sounds that I'm using already in different frequency ranges. Now, I'm not looking at a book saying like, okay, Minitari, you need to be over here, but you'll hear it. If they're not clashing and you can hear them very distinctly, it means that they're in the same neighborhood, not in the same house. That's very important. So obviously, let's go in with the drums. Let's go in with with this, just going this, as I told you, so everything is clearly audible, right? You hear this one? You hear the mini tar, bam, 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 bam. You hear the tibo three. Okay, and then uh, the, the model E. Nice. Now listen what happens if I'm going to point all these different sounds, I'm going to point to them with my color frequency. Here we start to point a little bit at the mini tower, can you hear it? Mini tower is now by itself. The model D is underneath and then... That's the mini tower. And the, the TBO3 as well. So. Putting your color frequency on 9 o'clock means those two sounds are now actually gelled together as grid in between the bricks. And this is how you just build a sound that will sound uh, 
very much in unison, but at the same time, it doesn't really, it's not gonna pick at your brain like, ah, because the easiest ways to congest music is if it's not pulling at your ear, uh, screaming for attention. It needs to just be pleasing to the listener. And that's what I always try to do with this kind of sound. Now, the arpeggio has been hiding in the background because this thing, is such a CIA uh, operative. Uh, you don't really hear that it's there, but it's doing its job because if I turn it off, whoa, all of a sudden you're missing something, yeah? So this is telling the crowd we're actually making music here. I'm composing something rather than producing something. And that's not to say that one is better than the, o than the other, but if you can and you have a little sense of you can play something, then obviously it's nice to just play something. So. And then you can sound design on this thing as well, which I'm not going to go into because literally this thing has been in my possession um, a few hours, so I don't want, to want you to go like, dude, what the hell are you doing? But I'll promise you in the future, because it looks like a keeper, this one. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a synth size I've been, I've been looking for for a while. Because it's very intuitive. And when I talk about A, B and C segments, it means that if this goes down again, the Model B, you see, it's like, it's like players on a field. It's almost like a, like a soccer or football match, you know? I mean, sometimes people have to play together and they're in that same uh, box doing stuff, playing together, but sometimes they need to just like be spaced out apart from each other so that they are visible in order to do something. So um, I've, I've mapped up the whole, the whole box in a way that it's almost like an orchestra. Now you play. See? So if I turn it up, mini tar gone. But arpeggio, very audible. So the trick now is to just go down on the uh, arpeggio and go down on a, go down on. That's very fashionable, isn't it? Actually turn down the filters, <laughs> I would say. Oh my God. Okay. But listen to what, what, what appears uh, to be coming out of the darkness now. The Mini Tower and the TBO3. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this is exactly how you should look at um, um, a doorless live set. Um, if you're... Comp Stop it. If you are um, compiling sounds... Uh, if, if you're thinking of, of, of doing this stuff, you know, I mean, there's this is a learning curve. I understand there is a learning curve, but at the same time, it's a completely different approach to, it's crazy that I have to say that because nowadays it's a different approach to making music, but then again, I originate from a time that there were no screens per se. It was listening to what you are doing. And funny enough, um, the sounds that I choose, I need them to be great out of the gate. You know, I don't want to be tweaking a kick for an hour. If I'm doing a live set and I'm tweaking the kick for an hour, you'll probably be heading for another room for somebody that's talking your language right so the musical narrative that I need to make with you needs to be very interactive you need to come up to me and and almost demand a certain emotion for me to just step into it if it needs to be more melodic if it needs to be more spaced out I can do that with this uh, mini lock I can do it with the with the uh, how do you think is micro monster or with the tetra you know I mean it's really cool then again if it needs to be more adrenaline uh, it needs to be a little bit more gritty I will go for the model D if it needs to be a little bit groovy I love the MOOC for that you know I love the mini tar it's a very very cool machine to do that and then obviously I can stick samples in and just work my way around that as well to just make sure that I'm not only um, that guy that's got sounds coming out of boxes I do need a little bit of flirting with the outside world so if there are samples that I can stick in here I'll probably do it. Um, and I can chop them up and have beat jitter, have reverb and everything just on the octatrack. track. And my drums and my ear candy come from the air And I hope that this was helpful. Don't forget to click subscribe if you liked what you see, you love what you hear, as well as supporting the vibe on Patreon. Cause certain tiers on Patreon actually have Discord benefits involved, which means that you get to just chat to all of us out there. If this video just uh, went a little bit too fast, you know, so 
obviously you can head over there and uh, it's a cool thing. We're building a cool community. Yeah, so everybody's talking about their music. Everybody's really respectful and the, show, the sharing vi uh, photos are on their um, on their gear and on their studios and you know it's cool to talk about this stuff and I really really like all your new subscribers and the fact that you dig what I'm doing links to all the equipment noted in the fall below so if you see something you like head over there and then you'll find out uh, what it's all about those are affiliate links mind you but still um, yeah and you can support the music on Bandcamp I like uh, making these videos for you guys I really do because I really see that you um, um, you find that we're tapping on into this niche. I mean, everybody's just like unboxing stuff and talking about stuff and it's cool. But in the end of the day, I do think that you can read all the manuals you want. You can read all the manuals you want. You can read manuals all you want, that's it. You can read manuals all you want, but in the end of the day, if you don't know how to apply it to the music that you are looking for, then what's the use, yeah? Why would you do that? So this channel is all about applying stuff and getting better. Every video should make you um, feel that you learned something you didn't really know before or you knew but didn't know how to apply it in that sense. That's why you're here. That's why you're here in the kitchen. My chef's hat goes off to you. I bid you a farewell and I'll see you next week in another video. Peace. Excuse me.